folks, we are going to break down the Raw and SmackDown the week after WrestleMania. We're going to start on Monday, April 8th in Philadelphia. Triple H comes out, cuts a promo. The crowd's chanting, thank you, Hunter, which he thanks them for the greatest WrestleMania ever. And we all know that's something that Hunter has to say because we're in the midst of a new era here in WWE. So he really wants to put that over. Uh, he introduces Cody Rhodes, who gets a You Deserve It chant, which is one of the four pre-programmed chants the audience knows, I think. Uh, it, that's They do that so much. Triple H thanks Cody, puts him over, puts over Mania, and then the 20K in attendance in Philly that night after WrestleMania, after they've been through a WrestleMania fucking month, <laughs> which it seems like, you know, 75 hours of wrestling in two nights over Saturday and Sunday, and yeah, yeah, so we got 20,000 people after like 145,000 over the course of the two nights, uh, Saturday and Sunday, in all seriousness. Uh, we get a video package, a uh, song by Andre Day, all emotional, blah, blah, blah. A big hug between Triple H and Cody elicits, of course, yet another You Deserve It chant. Uh, Cody kneels, lays down the belt, kisses it, and then the promo finally starts, and we're like 18 minutes in at this point. Then Cody has Samantha Irvin introduce him, uh, which she did without crying, and I was impressed because we know that she can't introduce Cody Rhodes as champion without fucking crying for some reason. I never once heard Howard Finkel or anybody cry while they were announcing a new champion. Never. So Cody puts over Roman's title reign, and we get a thank you Roman chant, and it was at this point I realized I already missed Roman Reigns because we had a real man as champion before. Uh, the Rock, of course, interrupts Cody. We knew this was going to happen. He comes out with his uh, People's Champion title, which was given to him by Muhammad Ali's widow. Rock goes heel on the crowd, insults them. You know, they chant a little bit at him. And, yeah, it was uh, it was a rock moment, you know, a heel rock moment, which was all right. Uh, but The Rock asked Cody to hold his new title. And Cody says, if I can hold yours, which is, it was a it was an odd moment. Rock puts it on his shoulder and says, this just feels natural. This feels right, you know. So that was kind of a, a little moment between the two of them there. And Rock says he's got to go away for a little while. And the people then give him the na-na-na-na, hey, goodbye chant, which was kind of funny. Uh, Rock says upon his return, he's coming for Cody. Whether he's champion or not, The Rock says your story with Roman is over, but your story with The Rock is just beginning. And just beginning, we're 45 minutes into this show, and the promo's been going on the entire length of the show at this point. So we get a recap of Rollins and Drew McIntyre, the situation at WrestleMania there. And leads to a Judgment Day promo with Finn Balor, Dom, and JT McDonough. Uh, they introduce Rhea Ripley first. Dom does. The crowd drowns him out with booze, which really shows you what they think about this stable, you know, uh, when the people involved aren't Rhea Ripley or Damian Priest. It's Dom is over as a heel, though. I will say that. I really, I used to just despise him, like, overall. And I really appreciate his heel work more now because he's kind of come into his own as a heel. Um, but yeah, crowd pops and Rhea enters. Uh, Baylor introduces Priest as world heavyweight champion. He gets a you deserve it chant. And the best part of the promo was our truth showing up and proposing that Miz join the Judgment Day, which the other members are not in favor of. Uh, Judgment Day jumps Miz and Truth. This leads into our first match, which is a tag match, handicap match, Dom, JT, Finn versus Truth and Miz. Truth and Miz are aided by a run-in from somebody who, Truth tees, you can't see him, which we thought he was talking about Lil Jimmy. No, it was John Cena, who we know he was going to show up. It's night after. Uh, he, we got a triple five-knuckle shuffle. Cena did the hot tag gimmick. You know, it was kind of funny. He did the R-Truth spot. We get a triple five-knuckle shuffle and an attitude adjustment from all, from tr uh, Cena, Truth, and Miz. And Miz, like I said, he did the attitude adjustment. Almost dropped, I think it was Balor onto Miz or Dom and Cena, which was like, oh, you know, they were, the spacing wasn't right on that, but it was a nice spot. Uh, crowd fucking pops for them. You know, it wasn't really much uh, to the match back uh, overall, but just a kind of a nice feel-good moment 
for Truth and Miz and their comedy spots as a tag team. And I'm not a big comedy guy when it comes to this shit. I'm not. I was very protective of my gimmick, but we did comedy spots when it was appropriate, you know, for heels to do them. Uh, not all the time. I don't want. I never wanted to be. So my tag partner was always like, "Oh, let's do this. It'll be fun." I'm like, "Fuck that. I don't want to do comedy shit." He's like, "But that gets we're over when we do that." I'm like, "I don't want to fucking do it," you know. But we did, and it worked. He was always the kind of the goofier one, and I was like the more serious out of the two of us. I would say. Uh, Rhea's backstage and she gets assaulted by Liv Morgan. Liv hits her in the head with a chair, knocks her into the wall, and this is going to lead to Rhea's injury and her taking some time off, which we'll cover on the um, next Raw. But uh, match two, Indy Hartwell with Candice LeRae versus Roxanne Perez, who's the NXT Women's Champ. Trash match, no real storytelling. The only storytelling we had was the kind of friction between Candice LeRae and her uh, charge, Indy Hartwell, who Hartwell is the babyface. Larray was acting very heelish. Um, Roxanne Perez wins with a Canadian Destroyer she calls Pop Rocks. Because everybody can do a Canadian Destroyer now. Match three, number one contender. Yeah, I, I really have nothing else to say about Roxanne Perez and Chelsea Green. I don't fucking care. Indy Hartwell, I don't have anything. I don't even know her name. I don't have anything to say about this match outside of it was there to take up time. I don't know why this was on TV. Uh, match three, world title number one contender, Fatal 4-Way. Drew McIntyre versus Jey Uso versus Bronson Reed versus Ricochet. We know we got Ricochet spots in this match. Bronson Reed showed off the power. Jey Uso, main event Jey Uso's there. They're really pushing him now. Uh, McIntyre, we know where he stands. He's not going to go over in this because he's got the feud coming up with CM Punk. No titles involved. Jey Uso goes over on Drew with interference from CM Punk. When he was trying to go for his Claymore kick. So he's the number one contender. That was the main event. That's how the night ends right there. So, Jey Uso, now the number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. Which is held by Damian Priest. So, you know, this this would have been uh, Bronson Reed. Why? I, I don't know anything about Bronson Reed. I really don't. I'm, I'm just starting to get back into the TV product. And this guy wasn't WrestleMania. I have no fucking clue who he is. Um, I've heard his name before, never really seen him work. He's a big guy. Reminds me of, what's his name, Tyrus? <laughs> a little more a little more uh, in-ring acumen than Tyrus, but kind of that same. Uh, maybe give him some Funkadactyls. Uh, Ricochet, uh, the best thing about Ricochet is he married Samantha Irvin somehow. Uh, Jey Uso, I, Jey Uso I do like. The singles thing with the Usos, though, I think it would only work if one of them was gone for the comp from the company. Because they're so intrinsically linked together, even though one's a heel and one's a baby face. And their match at WrestleMania was fucking god-awful. Like, you would think it would be a better match like Brett and Owen had. But no, it wasn't. Um, yeah, Drew Drew doesn't need a title right now. I mean, I know why they did what they did, but he doesn't need a title. And they're damn sure not going to take the title off of Damian Priest and give it to Jey Uso already. It's not going to happen. So that was the end of Raw. Overall... A average night after Mania show. Very promo heavy. Um, yeah. So let's move on to SmackDown. WWE SmackDown. April 12th. Little Caesars Arena. Detroit, Michigan. My home state. You know, I actually thought about going to this show. But I, I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't have time that week. There's a lot going on. Um, opening promo. Cody Rhodes comes out again. Cuts promo on The Rock. Leaving for Hollywood. Uh, then coming back and looking for him. Uh, he's looking forward to Backlash and Leon France. Hypes up the two three-way matches for, that are going to determine the number one contenders for his title, which will face off you know, in a main event match um, the following week on SmackDown. So April 19th, that will uh, that'll happen. So yeah, here we are. It was a generic promo, really nothing of substance. Remember, Cody is still on SmackDown, though. Predominantly, he's he's supposed to be on the SmackDown brand. Um, number one match, triple threat, number one contenders match or triple threat match for who goes to the match next Friday, which is the main event to determine the number one contender. We have six contenders for two spots. Los Angeles night first, yeah. Then we have Bobby Lashley in Santos Escobar. Was there any? Was there any doubt that LA Knight was going over in this? They had one really nice spot, Tower Doom corner spot. 
uh, the Street Profits come in and save uh, Lashley from Elgato No Es Bueno. And Los Angeles Knight wins after he hits a BFT on Escobar. Now, LA Knight moves on to the April 19th edition of SmackDown, which is a week from that Friday, to face either AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, or Kevin Owens. Gee, I wonder who this is going to be. Bloodline promo, Heyman, Solo, and Jimmy Uso. Uh, Tama Tonga comes in, jumps Jimmy. They kick him out of the group, and he's no longer in the bloodline. Is now the wise man, Paul Heyman, Solo Sokoa, and Tama Tonga, who is Haku's son, which Haku, historically one of the toughest men in the locker room. So let's see if his son, his son's coming on in kind of that enforcer role for the bloodline, which was Solo's role before, but now Solo is kind of, looking to take over the bloodline, which I think this is a good move for him. It'll maintain relevance for him because he really doesn't have a lot going on outside of that angle. So this will really uh, help him maintain his relevance now that Roman is going to be gone for a little while. Match two, Cameron Grimes versus Braun Breaker. This guy's a stud, and I'm not talking about Cameron Grimes. Braun Breaker, Rick Steiner's son, is a fucking beast. Uh, we all know the Royal Rumble. He got the Brock Lesnar spots that were intended for him, but because of everything going on, Brock wasn't there. So he wins a squash, looks like a star, and this was over very quickly. Uh, the guy runs the ropes at 100 miles an hour. I'm not saying it's a great thing all the time, but he's his motor is always in fourth gear. Like Very high energy uh, is Braun Breaker. Very high energy worker, and I really like that about him. AJ Styles promo teasing the triple threat for later tonight, which whatever. Uh, then Bailey comes out to cut a promo, uh, and Bailey is a very captivating speaker. I can't say that with a straight face. It's boring. Uh, she's the new undisputed women's champion. She puts over the new era, which is kind of a running theme throughout promos and commentary. They're doing that, and you're hearing more freedom for the commentators too, which I am a fan of as somebody who started as a color commentator. Um, them having Vince in their ears really uh, handicapped their ability to effectively be commentators and provide commentary that sounds organic and not completely scripted down to the letter. Bailey's promo is just boring, but Tiffany Stratton comes out, interrupts. Bailey names Naomi the number one contender, and then she comes down to the ring, and Naomi says before she can accept the spot, she needs a victory over Tiffany. So that'll set up for later, which is right now. Match three, Naomi versus Tiffany, and Naomi goes over, which we knew Tiffany wasn't going to go over. It still doesn't make me like this result because I don't like Naomi. I never have. I don't care about her. I, I just I know they're pushing Tiffany. She's losing to somebody who is not relevant outside of she was the third wheel in the Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair tag team at WrestleMania, and she's just vanilla paste here. I just there's really. Her glow, that that was cool, what, 10 years ago when she started doing it? I don't know. It's just passe now. Don't care. She lost, you know, and, and Tiffany lost clean. Uh, especially considering Naomi's not going to win that belt from Bailey ever. I just don't want this to diminish Tiffany's push at all, which I don't think it will. Uh, I, I, I believe she can still get over. But Naomi's going to face Bailey next Friday night on SmackDown for her undisputed women's title. And we get another hype package. For the tag team champions, Austin Theory, Grayson Waller. Then we go to a Logan Paul selfie video uh, promo. He's talking about the U.S. championship, which he has. You know, how he beat Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Really kind of poo-poos Owens, but, you know, kind of gives Orton his props. You can like or hate Logan Paul because he's a part-time guy. But the dude works really well in the ring. He needs to put on some size. He's a little bit thin, but still a solid worker. And he's taken to it like that. So match four, that leads into this. Chelsea Green and Piper Niven versus Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Jade pins Chelsea Green after a few decent moves and a very, very sloppy choke slam. Uh, kick, chokes, you know, uh, Chelsea went to kick her, Jade trapped her arm, goes to the choke slam, and it just looked bad. Jade needs to do the two-handed. One one hand uh, grab the, you know, the, the waist of the, the pants of the other, and then you know, up and straight down. Um, it just, it didn't, it didn't look good. But her glam slam, implant buster, whatever you call it, looked fucking awesome as it usually does. It, like I said, squash match. 
Piper, Niven, and Bianca went back and forth a little bit at the beginning. Jade came in to take it home, and yeah, it, it is what it is. It was a pray to God that Jade improves because this woman looks like she belongs in the ring and uh, a match between two muscle mommies and Jade Cargill and Rhea Ripley eventually. Um, that is a, a veritable um, feast for the eyes and senses to behold. Um, but Jade's really got to improve. Uh, that one-on-one -on -one is just not there yet. And Tony Khan did her a disservice by not by putting her on an island and not allowing her to interact with the other like main event girls until she was leaving the company. Uh, we have Kevin Owens pre-match spot. Uh, great promo. He, le it le he goes right through the gorilla position. Grabs a Detroit Tigers title belt. Comes out with that. Gets a good pop. Match five. Main event. Triple threat for the second spot in that number one contender match. Next week on SmackDown. Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles versus Rey Mysterio. And AJ Styles wins with a top rope. Styles clash on Mysterio. Splash combo onto Owens off the second rope. Uh, it looked fantastic. This match was good. Um, Owens and Styles were good together. Mysterio still works good in the ring. I've I've never been a Rey Mysterio fan. I, I you guys know that. I, I've mentioned it before. Respect him. Just never been a fucking fan. Uh, I always love Rey the Giant Killer. I I hate those angles. I, I hate those angles. I hate those angles. You know, I, in WCW when they did that with him, I thought it was the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I know they were pushing him. I just I don't have to like it. I don't have to be a fan. I, I've never been a fan of little guys like that that are, you know, go over on monsters. I just think it's fucking ridiculous. Um, keep them in the cruiserweight division where they belong. And the last thing I'll say about it is Rey Mysterio's world heavyweight title reign in the Fed in like 2000, was it? I can't remember. It was like six or seven. It was a fucking joke. But AJ Styles goes over in this match and rematch between him and Los Angeles Knight from WrestleMania that'll take place next Friday on SmackDown and determine who the number one contender is for Cody Rhodes' undisputed Universal Championship. We go off the air with a face-off in ring, no physicality, yeah, between Knight and Styles. That ends SmackDown this week. The Raw after WrestleMania, boring, 45-minute opening promos. Uh, you're never going to win me over with that. Never, never, never. Not in a million years are you going to win me over with that. The rest of the show was just blase. Uh, you had three, you had three matches on Raw, three matches on Raw, and the first match didn't occur until almost an hour into the program. Yeah, Indy Hartwell and Roxanne Perez was way out of place on that. Uh, just didn't belong there. It, it didn't. I don't give a shit. Roxanne Perez, the NXT Women's Champion, put her back on NXT. She's not ready for prime. She's one of those not ready for prime time players. Uh, SmackDown. The matches were spread out and dispersed evenly through the promos, so I thought that was nice. Uh, it, the show breathed better, so we'll see how Raw goes. You know, next week when we review that show from uh, the 15th from Montreal, which is where we're at next. But after WrestleMania, you're setting up, you're resetting things. You know, carrying on some new angles. So I really like where they're going with LA Knight. Um, yeah, he needs much, much more. And we'll see how that goes for him next week on SmackDown. But we got to do Raw first. So that's it, gang. Let me know what you thought of Raw and SmackDown last week, respectively, from Philly and Detroit. And leave your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't. Let me know if you want more wrestling content. We do wrestling and horror here on the channel. That's basically all we do now. So subscribe for more content. I will see you guys when we talk about Raw and SmackDown from Montreal in Pittsburgh, folks. I'm Etep Okui, and from The Place to Be Reviews, I've been here with all you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and I will catch you on the next one. Remember, it's always better to burn out and fade away.